Welcome back, Officers of Republic. It's your course on Unreal Police Chief AP Gaines. A lot of you guys ask me, AP Gaines, I'm following the AP Gaines approved farming guide, the best farming guide in all of Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, and I want to know how much I should gear Relic or do whatever with each character. How much progression should I put on each character before maybe I move on to the next uh, the next tier of, or the next phase of the farming guide, or go on with my life. So I will teach you how to generally identify how much you should relic or gear or do anything with a character before you move on. So, um, a recommendation for all of you guys who don't already have, you know, a bunch of squads planned out, I would, you know, plan out all the squads that you want, even if they're characters that you don't have, um, literally just make a squad tab of all the stuff that you want, all the stuff that you have. So let's say, you know, I only had CLS, Han Solo, Chewbacca, and 3PO and Trio, but I didn't have C-3PO. Stick C-3PO in here just so that you have a place to go and figure out, you know, and look at everything that you want to farm. So um, I'll talk mostly about the Core 8 uh, because, you know, well, they're the Core 8, so they're the most important teams in the game. Um, but outside of that, if any team in general, unless you're doing, you know, some sort of character that requires, you know, Relic 5s or specific Relics like a Galactic Legend or something where you have to have specific stuff, you know, obviously I have to take, that, take them up to that area, but... Let's say you have a team. This could be literally any team, but I'll use the CLS team, for instance. You want to identify first who is the most important character. The most important character on the CLS team is oftentimes confusing because all of them are really, really good. Um, CLS is going to be your most important character of this team, but if this was you know, this EP Mara Jade team, it would be Vader. If it was this Padme team, it would be Anakin. If it was this Bounty Hunter team, it would be Zam or Boss, depending on your level. If it was this bounty, uh, this Darth Revan team, it would be Darth Revan, and then eventually it would be Malak, but you should already have Darth Revan Relic before you get Malak, so that's not really a problem. If it's a Jedi Knight Revan team, it's Jedi Knight Revan. If it's Grievous, it's Grievous. If it's Gas, it's Gas, you know what I mean? So it's pretty easy to identify, if you know kind of how the game works, who the most important character is, and they should be your focal point. So if you're going to Relic any characters, it's going to be the most important character on that squad. If we go out to, you know, more expanded, like sometimes people are going to do stuff like the Triumvirate, who's the most important character here? Well, a lot of people used to love to Relic Scion, but, you know, Dark Treya is definitely a very good Relic. She is very applicable throughout the game. If it's your Geonosians, who's your best Relic? It's going to be Spy. If it's, you know, your Ewoks, your best Relic is, well, probably going to be Elder. If it's the uh, the Imperial Troopers, it's probably going to be Piet or Dark Trooper, depending on how fast your Piet is. Same thing here. Like, you have to identify the most important character. This is a perfect example. Characters who are low gear, low stars... But the most important character here is Relic. Why is Death Trooper the most important character over Iden Versio? Because Iden Versio has good value at three stars. She's not accelerated rate, so it would take me forever to get her up to seven stars, and then her gear is impossible. So I leave her at low stars, low gear, because I can do a lot with that. I'm getting good value out of that character. And then Death Trooper was an easy Relic, and he ends up doing a lot of damage and kind of carries this team. So this team, I can beat highly relic Mon Mothma teams on defense with only a Relic 1 Death Trooper, everyone else being literally gear nothing, basically. All across the board, well, these are just like level 1 teams that I place on defense for funsies. All across the board, you want to identify the most important character and Relic them. What if you don't have Relics? What if you don't have access to Relics? Same thing goes. Maybe gear 10 is the highest you can take a character you go there. What about after that? You know, you can gear 12, you can relic, sure. You have one character relic, the rest are not looking so good. Should I leave everyone else trash and focus solely on one character and bring them up to highest gear, maybe relic as fast as possible while I let everyone lag behind? I generally have a rule of, you know, if it's a brand new team, like let's go back to the Iden Versio team just because it's a, a pretty solid example. If we go back to the Iden Versio team, wherever it may be, somewhere down here, I generally have a rule of you should not let your supporting characters lag two or three gear levels behind the main character, right? So if you saw back in ye olden days when I was farming up CLS or Jedi Knight Revan, you know, I would relic my Jedi Knight Revan, but my Yoda, my Jolie, and my, you know, whatever else characters would be gear 11 or gear 12, so they're at least relatively close they're comparable in power it's not i'm not going to go into a situation where one character is super good and the rest die instantaneously right it's usually two to three gear pieces you don't want them to lag behind of course there are special circumstances like iden versio where one character you know is the most important but can be low gear low star one character is very important and can be super high gear and the rest of the team is carried by the team synergy and doesn't need to be like this 
Another great example of this exact situation is the Geonosians. Lots of people make the mistake of relicking up their Geonosians. I don't even know where my Geonosians are. Um, they're somewhere here. Lots of people make the mistake of relicking up all the Geonosians, which is, you know, a terrible waste of resources. But, you know, if you bring up the Geonosian Brute Alpha to give health and protection to the rest of them, and he comes up to gear 12, you know, the rest of them should maybe be gear 10, you know? If you relic your spy, maybe you bring your Geonosian Brute Alpha up to gear 12 or relics, and the rest of them sit at gear 10, 11, or 12. You shouldn't bring them much past that unless you have, you know, all of your six fleets maxed out and you're just kind of boosting up your fleets at that point, which will happen around six or seven million GP, which wouldn't be applicable to most of you guys. But you wouldn't want them to lag super far behind. The Gene Oceans are kind of an exception because Brood carries all of them. So oftentimes what you'll see in good early game players is like a four star gear 10 gear 11 gene ocean brood alpha everyone else is seven stars gear six or seven and you're getting you know the same amount of value as you would out of you know like full gear 12 with low stars low gear because of how the team works lots of teams are like that's why you have to identify the most important character and decide whether it's a gene ocean brood alpha in an item seal where you can leave it at low stars low gear or it's something like a darth revan where you want to bring it up to relics quickly because he ramps and ramps and ramps because in this game, there are two different types of characters. There are characters that need to be relicked, and there's characters who would like to be relicked. Darth Revan, Basilish on Fall, and Malak are characters that need to be relics. They're good when they're not relicked, but when they're relicked or when they're higher gear, if you don't have access to relics yet, um, they, they explode into unlimited possibilities. Characters that don't need to be relicked. Mara Jade. Mara Jade's good at low stars. You know, I have her at three stars. She's not even that fast. But because there's lots of turn meter and speed on the rest of this team, she's okay and she's usable. Same thing with Iden Versio. There are characters that don't need to be relic, like, you know, the Triumvirate. You can use these three. I've been using these three Gear 12 Triumvirate, even without these other, you know, tanks, to beat fully Relic 5, Relic 7 Geonosians for what feels like almost two years at this point. These characters do not need to be relic. There's characters like the CLS team where they don't necessarily need to be relic, but these are characters that you want to relic. Just like Darth Revan. Like, is a Gear 12 Darth Revan going to beat some stuff? Sure. Is a Gear 12 across the board CLS team going to beat some stuff? Sure. But if you relic these characters, this becomes an immovable object and an unstoppable force in and of itself. That's why it's always your first super team, the CLS team. So generally, the characters and squads identified, you know, best character on your core eight squad, so CLS, Vader, Anakin, probably Bosk, Zam if you have the Omicron, Darth Revan, Jedi Knight Revan, Grievous, Gas for your core eight. Those characters need to be relic first. Don't let your the rest of your characters fall behind like two or three. If it's like four or five gear levels below, you're kind of letting that, that team slip up a little bit, and maybe you should focus on that team a little bit before you move on to another team. Um, but generally try to keep them, you know, within two or three. Relic the first character first. And, uh, you know, once the rest of the team's up to gear 10, gear 11, one character's relic, you're allowed to move on to another team.